The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Today, Deer and Wildlife Stories comes to you from just outside of Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. And we're going to introduce you to a man that a lot of people call him, well, they call him a deer farmer's best friend. I've known Kevin Gray since I got in the deer business, and uh, virtually anybody in the deer business knows who Kevin Grace is. Uh, there's no telling how many people he has helped set up and continues to help throughout the years. And uh, deer farming, uh, for many people, they wind up getting in it as a hobby, and it quickly turns into a business. And the reason why is because people see that they can make money at it, and it's uh, the American way. I mean, it's capitalism at its finest. You know. Uh, we can live out in, in a rural area. We can do something that uh, we're working outdoors with animals that we love and we can make a profit at it. So Kevin is a specialist. He uh, specializes in helping people uh, have their dreams come true being a deer farmer. My name is Kevin Grace. I'm with Whitetail Sales and I've been a deer farmer since 1993 and I live in Eldon, Missouri in the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks. Our breeding operation is, consists of 14 acres with 11 pens inside of that, and we raise over 200 deer on that. At Whitetail Sales, we have two different entities. We have the deer farm, which consists of over the 200 head of deer, and we also have a business that we promote and market for other people and have an auction business that is, uh, consists of the top 30 sale. That's one of the most popular sales in the world. The process of deer farming is, is a very important group of stages that you need to do. One of the most important stages is gathering information. You can gather that by going to deer farms. You can also gather that going to our website and checking out our website and getting information that way. Also going to auctions that I mentioned I done earlier. These are the beginning stages that you need to do to get a business plan to formulate your deer business. After that, the next stages are having a minimal amount of real estate and gathering the fencing and stuff like that, and that's where we'll come in to help you gather your deer, to find your deer for that farm at Whitetail Sales. All right, how do you buy deer? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can buy deer. You can come to a farm and come on a farm tour. Now, every deer farm that we go to on Deer and Wildlife Stories, every deer farm in the country, as a matter of fact, takes people on farm tours. Pick up the phone, call them up, tell them, look, I want to come look at deer, and I promise you, every one of them has an open gate policy. Uh, that's one way to buy deer. Uh, come out to the deer farm and just look at them and just make your deal right there. Another way is to go to sales. You can go to an auction and Kevin is, he's I guess the biggest auction guy in the deer industry. That he holds deer auctions all over from Texas all the way up to the Midwest and he has sold literally thousands and thousands of deer at these auctions. And so what I would encourage you to do, go to Kevin's website. You'll find out more about his auctions that he does. They're online. You can actually participate and watch and learn a lot from watching these online auctions before you actually come on a farm tour. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. Kevin Grace is a virtual encyclopedia when it comes to the deer industry, and he has helped lots of people get started and become profitable as deer farmers. On today's show, we're gonna introduce you to some of those people. Hi, my name's Kelly Westfall, and this is my husband, Garrett. We've been deer farming for four years. 
And uh, when we started, we contacted Kevin Grace and he has been great to deal with from start to finish. When we first started deer farming, I don't think we realized how fun it would be to watch our genetics come out in the yearlings and see them grow to the first, second, and third. It, it is, it's kind of something like how we built it, you know. Once you take the genetics of a good buck or the good doe, and you can't wait till that first year rack come on to see what we're actually gonna grow. And that has been... It's exciting. All right. Boy, you've got some really nice ones. There's a wide one over there. Just see them there? That mm -hmm. wide one? That Now, all these are yearlings? Every one of them yearlings in here, Keith. All right. Got that, uh, 26 yearlings in here. My gosh, and I'll take a look at the at the frames on them. I mean, they're just all real pretty framed deer. Good frames. We're really working hard on that frame. We get that from the female side, Keith. We really concentrate hard on the female side, and definitely the top side, the male genetics help. We've been adding a lot of Texas influence. You're gonna see a lot of stuff with Gladiator 2, Big Stitch, a lot of those genetics from Texas. Well, I wound up, uh, I've been coming here, I don't know how many times I've been here. And folks, coming here, I can tell you right now, the one thing that I notice every single time I come here is the frames. The frames of these deer are beautiful. And that's what Kevin really specializes in. That's what he's, that's what he's his goal is, to grow big, framey deer and his yearlings. I, Look at this guy or that guy or that guy. I mean, there's a bunch of them in here. The frames are just beautiful on them. All right, so if somebody wants to come out here on a farm tour or find out more information on whitetail sales, what do they need to do? They can call us direct. Call us at the office, 573-392-8230. Gets us at the office, set up an appointment, you know, seven days a week. We'll meet with you if we're in town. Uh, Colin has always been there for 100% of the time for business plans, marketing, management, you know, to help you get started. That's, that's what we're really known for, is consulting. Folks, and the thing is about Whitetail Sales, Kevin advises people, he's a consultant all over the country, not just here in Missouri, but there's somebody calling right there, probably needs some help. Yep. <laughs> or it's your wife <laughs> needing your no, help. No, it's a client. <laughs> we'll call him back here in a second. <laughs> Joe Melville. I've been in the deer breeding business here about nine months now. Uh, Kevin Grace and his staff has been an extremely helpful to me to, to get where I'm at today. I purchased uh, 10 bred does to Big Stitch from uh, Kevin Grace from Whitetail Sales. Uh, he has great genetics, but he goes the extra step and the extra mile. Uh, I've called him at three o'clock in the morning when I had a problem with a Fuso bacteria outbreak on my facility. Uh, unfortunately, before I realized what was going on, I lost 15 fawns. Since he, he told me what to look for and how to treat it, I've saved every fawn since then. There's a lot of deer breeders in the United States. There's thousands. But there's no one else like Kevin Grace or Whitetail Sales that will go the extra mile and help you the way they helped me. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. Hi, I'm Byron Young and I live up there around Warrensburg, Missouri and uh, we've been planning on deer farming. Me and my wife been planning, Julie have been planning on deer farming for the last year and a half. And we've run across a lot of deer farmers and been to some of the ranches and stuff like that and they're just, they're just an outstanding group of people. We've been looking at the deer farming industry for a couple of years now and um, we've been down and visited Kevin's farm several times. He's uh, taught us how to bottle feed his uh, baby deer and that of course is, is a lot of fun. He's also taught us some basic farming needs and some uh, basic medical things. We've uh, researched the industry because there's a lot of uh, legislation going on in regards to that and uh, we still think that it's a good profitable business and I think we're looking forward to moving on. Holy smokes. You know, I just love coming out here and seeing what you're doing. I mean, this is the, your pen, every year you have your two slash three year olds in this same area, don't you? Yep. And I mean, I, I wound up, I, I remember coming here and the deer come up out of the woods and I look at them and I'm just so impressed. Uh, the, the one thing that what Kevin winds up doing, he tries to go for that wow factor. I mean, he, he and, and you look at these deer and it's just wow. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. So these deer ultimately, as, as you have new deer farmers come out here and look at your bucks, okay, and they, are they gonna use these bucks? Would they use these bucks in for breeding? 
or would they use these bucks to release on a high fence place for the genetics to spread through the high fence place? What would they use these deer for? I think a little bit of both, Keith. We're going to have, we definitely sell off a select few of bucks every year for breeders. Every year we have a good participation on that. And then we also do a loan out program that's been very popular. When you buy a group of does from us, we usually try to sell our does bread. But then the next year, we'll help you and assist you on the AI program, and then we will give you a loaner buck to use. We'll let you come pick a buck out that you like to back up that program with. That's one of the consultation things that you get with whitetail sales. This, this is what I see is that when you wind up dealing with Kevin, okay, what you wind up having, you have literally it's a one-stop shop for the deer farmer. When you come out here, you can see everything from from bottle raised babies all the way up to great big breeder bucks, and and everything in between. And so, you know, if you're interested in deer farming, you're not just talking about Missouri. I mean, he's here in Missouri, but you help people out all over the country, right? All over the country, absolutely. I can't stress to you enough, if you're going to get involved in the deer farming industry, you need to get involved with somebody who's a mentor. Somebody who's going to be there and hold your hand and to help you out with any problems. And Kevin Grace at Whitetail Sales yep. is a great resource that will help you out. So give them a website to contact you. Whitetailsales.com would be the website. Uh, phone number 573-392-8230 would be our office number. We can get you to call on the cell phone, my cell phone, whatever we need to do on that end. And when you come out here, you're going to be impressed. I promise you. My name is Greg Kastner. I uh, am the owner of Fondo Bucks Whitetail Deer Farm in Clark, Missouri. I bought a deer farm about a year ago. It's been super successful, and I attribute that to the help from Kevin Grace out here at Whitetail Sales and Service. We are really excited about purchasing some deer from them. We are amazed at what he's doing out here and how his deer look. I think uh, we're going to have a great successful career in our deer farming and uh, we thank Kevin for that. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. Okay, my name is Kevin Bortz. It's with Broken Road Whitetails. Um, we've been in deer farming for about two years now. Um, actually was watching this show, saw Kevin Grace's farm, went over and visited and that's how it all got started. And I'm in the education business and I would just um, have it be a full-time coach um, for what you need to help and support you day, night, early in the morning. Um, I've texted Colin myself or Kevin and both of them are right there. I think the, the bigger deal is anybody can be there at the beginning, but when you get two, three years in and you see that you have a really strong relationship with those individuals, um, they're part of your family then. And I don't think that happens with everybody in the deer business, but I do know it does with Kevin. All right, so how old are these guys? We'd have uh, three-year-olds, two-year-olds, and yearlings all in this pen. Mm -hmm. This is my original herd I started with in 1993. You know, Glory came out of here, Bull came out of this pen. Those are bucks you remember, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is heavy in Texas influence, very heavy in Texas influence. I've been breeding Texas since tw uh, 2001 in this pen. Well, uh, folks, the, this pen right here is actually in a different location than, than the other pens in the, the office and uh, uh, this is your actually the first farm isn't it? This is my first farm. First deer herd and I actually had another farm but it's the first deer herd. I started this in 1993. And so these deer that we're looking at here are out of the original deer that were on this farm. Yes sir. Okay but did I hear it right when I was in Florida the other day that some of these some of the deer that are in the Florida herd actually came from here? They did. Half of that herd was based off of this originally. This was heavy Texas influence, and we know when we went to Florida that we had to have that heavy, deep Texas influence, and we took this herd down there. Folks, we were in Florida just the other day and at, at uh, Mike Mansfield's and at High Expectation Whitetails, and Mike has got some phenomenal deer. Now, you heard Kevin talk about the deep, heavy Texas influence being here in Missouri, so how could it be taken over there? What happened before the borders closed? Kevin and Mike acted quickly before the borders closed, selected the genetics they wanted that would be hardy in that in that environment because it is a tropical environment down there mm -hmm. and the the texas influenced genetics are, are very hardy and mike's deer down there are really really big and and he he is absolutely insistent that the reason why they do so well is because of the texas influence absolutely absolutely we have very little death loss down there very little illness the texas influence strain as you've heard me mention multiple times over the years is what is needed for deep south breedings this right here, there are some exceptional deer in here 
Now, will you wind up using any of these guys for breeding? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's I, I'm looking at that six by six right there. He uh -huh. is he is a toad. I mean, I don't know what he scores, but anymore, I've got to the point. You know, I ask what a deer scores. I mean, look at this guy right here. I ask what they score, but but it, I really don't know why. And it's the, the frames. Reason, really? It's frame. about how big a frames they got. Yeah. I've got a lot of deer in here. Yeah, but as we're looking at these deer, I'm thinking that's the thing that is consistent with your deer. Frame, frame, frame. And and it's like, uh, it's the foundation. That's the foundation. You, you build a deer on his frame. And so you've got it figured out with the doe lines. And, and the, the, the cool thing is you bottle feed does every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is obviously to keep them gentle. And uh, I had an opportunity to go up there and spend some time. In, the, in that fawn barn and I just love those little guys yeah yeah these right here these are some phenomenal deer and this is so this you're seeing the Texas influence on these deer heavy it, is the bloodline a little bit more heavy Texas than the bloodline in the other pens actually I bought a bunch of doe I'm not a bunch I bought a few does from Texas two years ago and brought in here so I even have the maternal side Texas in this pen also the uh, top side the original stock I have is probably anywhere from three generations to five generations of Texas influence. Remember, even Glory, when Glory was born, he was the first son out of Texas influence I had on the farm. And he was 373 inches at three years old, which was the largest deer in the country ever at three years old back then. I think he was 2005 when that happened. And so what you're looking at here, the descendants from all that breeding. Yes. And again, these are all the, the all you have the registry and they're in the NADAR registry. Oh, absolutely. If somebody wants more information on Whitetail Sales, give them your website, please. Whitetailsales.com is our website. Go to it and you're going to find a lot of really good information right here out of Eldon, Missouri. Hi, my name is Greg Mills uh, with Mills View Whitetails. Uh, I started doing business with Kevin Grace uh, a few years ago when we got started in the, in the deer business, uh, purchasing some bread does. A year ago, we also bought a, a breeder buck from Kevin. Um, I found Kevin and Colin both to be just excellent resources uh, after the sale with their service. has been fantastic and it's one of the reasons that uh, we continue to do business with Kevin. You know, they call Missouri the show me state for many reasons, but when I come up here to Whitetail Sales, we show you some unbelievable deer and it's always a great time. If y'all have any questions or comments about the show, let me hear from you. Get on my Facebook page. And I promise you we'll get right back with you. If you'd like to get a hold of Kevin Grace at Whitetail Sales, we'll have a direct link off our website to his. My name's Keith Warren. I'd like to thank you for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey, what do y'all think? It's a pretty good afternoon, isn't it? Pretty afternoon after you're on the farm. Yeah. What you're about to see is graphic in nature, so viewer discretion is advised. Last August, many of Texas's deer farmers were forced to kill hundreds of perfectly healthy deer in order to test them for chronic wasting disease. To date, approximately 600 deer have been killed, and the killing isn't over. What's worse is that out of all the deer that were killed, not a single one of them tested positive for chronic wasting disease. I don't know about you, but to me there's just something wrong with the picture when you start killing perfectly healthy deer to test them to make sure they're not sick with chronic wasting disease. Now CWD has been around for over 50 years and I'm a believer that CWD, it needs to be managed uh, from science-based management rather than from a political agenda. And I think that we ought to learn from states that have been battling CWD for more than 50 years. And they themselves say that uh, there's nothing they can do to manage it. What they need to do is just monitor it. So again, I think that we ought to base our CWD stuff all on science and not on a political agenda. If you'd like to find out more about chronic wasting disease, let me encourage you to go to the website, cwdmyths.com.